we got Josh, we got Jim, we got Chris, and uh, we are letting you take over, Joe Castello. Thank you very much, Francis. Judy, thank you so much. Uh, Chris, hello, how are you? Jim, hello, and Josh, uh, long time no see. Wasn't that long ago I was hanging down with you guys as you kind of embarked into some new territory. Uh, we'll talk about that, but uh, you guys have, have kind of developed what I believe to be an industry standard, right? So uh, it's been on my phone for a while. Why don't you get us up to speed and uh, let's talk a little bit about my race pass. Well, first of all, I want to say thanks for having us. I, mean, I think I speak for Jim and Chris both, but um, we're excited to be a part of the Apart Trade. We're excited to be a part of this industry week, and um, and I'm I'm out in Reno right now, actually at the Promoters Conference for the RPM show, and I just I'm up in the hotel room for you know taking a break from that so I could attend this, but uh, just excited to be here and and um, and I'm looking forward to it. And Joe, we we hung out for about a week down there in Texas here not too long ago, and. And um, that was a lot of fun. We'll talk more about that. But I just to give a little background on my race pass as a company, um, we're a near 15 year old software company started by myself and two of my buddies, Ross Benek and Zach Kelmus. They're the software guys. They're the smart guys, right? They're the ones that make all the fun stuff happen. But uh, we started as a web development company building websites for race car drivers and race tracks, and that's evolved into a, our powerful my race pass network of websites mm -hmm. that include drivers, fans. Um, we evolved into a race management software that uh, nearly set, or over 700 promoters across the U.S. rely on on a weekly basis, and uh, that all kind of co comes into one spot with the My Race Pass app, which so many fans across the country um, utilize for their real-time lineups, results, live timing and scoring, driver bios. I mean, the list goes on and on. And uh, we'll talk more about how we hung out with Joe in October after a while, but. That's, that's kind of a gist of what my race pass is. And we just kind of touch all forms of motorsports, really focus on uh, currently we're in the circle track market, you know, your dirt track races, asphalt races on, on circle, and um, definitely looking to move into other, other genres here in the very short coming. So let's, uh, let's ask, you know, like, why did it begin? Like it began, but what, you know, I uh, would imagine you just wanted to stay up on what's happening at places that maybe you were not at, or give me the Genesis story for my race pass. Well, quite frankly, it was uh, Zach, my business partner. Um, we were at a buddy of ours birthday party. It was October 7th of 2007. And um, Zach and Ross had a small web company building websites. And, and if you remember back in 07, Facebook was really kind of taken off. And um, Zach proposed a question. You know, I was, I was, I've been ingrained in motorsports my entire life. I raced go-karts when I was a kid, winged sprint cars on dirt for nearly 15 years. Um, later, ran a couple different racetracks. But Zach brought up the question that hey, we should do websites for race car drivers. And so we started talking about it and uh, we launched our first website to a friend of mine who raced non-wing sprint cars out of Sioux Falls, South Dakota in January of 2008. And from the, from the very conception of my race pass, the idea behind it was to make it simple for racers um, and easy to, to maintain their own content. To, um, to have a database of information to where drivers can pull from, um, to generate stats efficiently and effectively and automatically. Um, so right from the get-go, we started My Race Pass, even though it wasn't called that. It was called Driver Websites. And over the times, um, Zach and Ross learned more and more about what we could do with technology in motorsports. And we started to come up with this. I mean, my race pass was the idea back on all of our meetings we had in late 07, early 08. But we didn't, we knew we couldn't just build that. And it wasn't like Field of Dreams. You can't just build it and it'll show up. So it was, uh, we had to get a footprint in this industry. And we knew the best way to get a footprint is in, this industry, in this industry is to solve some problems on the technology side with websites, providing a nice, effective uh, economical platform for drivers to come on board, which later turned into racetracks coming on board for their websites. And that just evolved from that, Joe. We had, um, once we started using the, the idea of updating everything yourself, um, so you don't have to rely on a web company, that's just evolved with how do we get the results on their website faster for like a racetrack? Well, then that, what, what spun that out was then was like, well, we should build a race management system to get the information sooner, quicker, faster, and be able to publish that out to the world. And, and then that was kind of the birth of our race management system in late 2011. Um, from there, then the ideas really start 
start flowing. And we started getting, we have the driver profiles to where drivers can manage their profile, like a Facebook page. Think of it that way, but it's, you know, racing related. Um, they can have their sponsors, their, 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 their results automatically get updated in their profile. Um, if they race at a track that uses my race pass. Um, so the ultimate goal was to have the app and we knew we, we, everything you see in the app now, we actually had on desktop, um, years ago, but it wasn't until we launched the app in 2018 that people were like, Oh, that's what those guys are up to. And it just brought everything together to get that instant gratification what I call the Twitter effect. People want that information as fast as possible when it happens. I know I do. <laughs> I want to know uh, everything as rapidly as is possible. And uh, Chris, I know you, uh, you working with the clients out there and Jim, obviously, uh, in charge of advertising. I would love to hear your guys' uh, perspective on what's going on with my race pass as well. What have been some of your observations as this business has uh, grown, expanded, and taken off and now become uh, almost uh, you know, vital, mandatory to many people who want to keep track of their results and results from racers and racetracks around the country? Yeah, absolutely. And it's kind of what you mentioned there, Joe, was uh, it's been come, uh, become essential, essentially. Um, you know, I started five years ago with the company and um, I had a goal uh, to, to Josh to kind of get things moving in a, in a direction as far as our growth goes. And, and um, I wanted to see certain things that maybe wouldn't be mentioned usually uh, in the goals. But, um, you know, when I noticed that we were starting to be uh, screenshotted for the app uh, on social media and things like that, I knew we were growing. People were using us essentially. And then we when you have drivers uh, going to promoters and telling them, you got to get my race pass. That's when you know we made an impact on the facility and the organization. And to see that a lot from, from drivers when you're, when you're out talking at um, racetracks or when you're out talking um, at uh, trade show events and having drivers go, hey, how do I get my track to get my race pass? That's when you know it's become really an essential part of things there. And we've really grown a lot in that aspect. And a lot of times now the drivers have made a bigger impact uh, on a track getting on board my race pass than essentially um, we have at some point in time. Because when a driver wants it and you're a promoter, well, you're going to listen to your driver and you're going to go ahead and see what he wants. So he's happy at your facility there. Excellent. And Jim? Well, I think, you know, for me, a big part of the excitement about uh, even being with my race pass in the first place is I met Josh the first time uh, a few years ago at the Chili Bowl. And then uh, again um, at the car show in Hickory a couple of years ago. And when the opportunity came up for us to start talking about working together and seeing what I could do using my experience uh, in the marketing world to, to start to expand the reach for the digital ads division for my race pass was talking to other people in the industry that I've known for a long time and trust and said, Hey, you know, I, I see my race pass at the tracks I go to, I see them in places, but what are these guys about really having everybody that I talk to that I respect in the industry come back and say, Oh, if you get a chance to work with these guys, you have to go to work with them. They're, they're on the cutting edge. There's a, there's a lot of really cool stuff that they're doing. You should get involved. Um, made it a really easy decision for me to, to, you know, come on board and find out what's going on and, and be really excited that, you know, to be in year two with the team almost now. Excellent. And, and what are some of those uh, benefits? Like I, you know, I flip on there to see uh, live timing results, right? As simple as that. But let's say you're a promoter or you're a driver, run the, the gamut of what, uh, what's possible, right? Because, uh, you know, I'm a surface viewer but I'm sure there are many layers to it. And what is the feedback you get that uh, the promoters of tracks and the drivers uh, benefit most greatly? Um, yeah, so with that, we really think of ourselves as the ultimate racing resource in, in many different ways. Um, we can you know, make a promoter's night easier. Uh, we can engage those fans for promoters. And we can also help grow that organization as well, too. Um, we kind of think of ourselves as the essential a suite of tools, um, all integrated kind of together to make the life of a promoter and, and the staff uh, easier, more efficient, kind of run things there. Uh, our, our race management program has become one of the, the top notch programs uh, for racing and grassroots motorsports the past uh, seven years now. And it's really expanded on as far as checking drivers in and running your race not effectively, essentially. Um, but then also on top of that, um, with one of our bigger updates here recently, we, we offer online ticketing as well, too, for promoters. Um, and in the past uh, nine years, it was general admission, but we had one of our biggest updates of this past season was with reserved seating um, and a point of sale system as well, too. And we really stressed the importance of 
expanding your product, uh, talking to promoters, expand your product, get your stuff out in front of your fans, let them know it's available, let them know you have things going on and give them a chance to buy their stuff there um, when they want to. And, and I think the online ticketing portion was a huge aspect as well. And then also the fan engagement comes with the, uh, the My Race Pass app where they can see all that race day information. They can see the lineups, results, entries, and they can play fantasy racing and buy tickets uh, on the app as well too. Um, so those are the bigger things there. Uh, as drivers go, um, it's kind of a database of their entire uh, racing career, essentially. Um, we even have historical results from back before My Race Pass started. Uh, you, you can search Chili Bowl and see all the Chili Bowl results in there from day one of the Chili Bowl. Um, so if you want to see your history, you can enter them in there as well, too, and have that database for, for you to have and for your fans to see, too, uh, in the long term of things. Um, and, of course, I mentioned the tickets uh, as well. That's been one of our bigger pushes here as of late uh, to really uh, stress the importance for fans to grow their organization and to really uh, take that next step um, as, a, um, as an organization, whether it be a track or a series. Some series do offer online ticketing as well, too, uh, to really you know, offer it to fans and to show them, hey, get our stuff now. Um, and go ahead and have your night planned in advance, and uh, you're all, you're all secure there as well too for the future. Got one it. of the uh, go ahead, yes, go ahead. Sorry, Joe. One of the th I wanted to expand on what Chris said there, a um, little more in depth or more specific on a racetrack side. What we've tried to do there is is build a, a system there that just makes their night easier. So we do everything from online registration to like a, a big event going on. Drivers can register online that populates that uh, database, so to speak, for that event, for that racetrack. The drivers then show up um, in the circle track world. There's a lot of, uh, you know, you get your pill number to see where you're going to start for qualifying or heat races or whatever. Uh, the system can do that. The system can generate the lineups. The system will then talk with the, the in the circle track world, there's there's MyLapse, the Orbit system, and then there's Westhold with Race Manager, they're, they're the transponder systems. So we built a program that ties those systems to my race pass to make that efficient and, uh, and easy. Um, so then they can dump the results back into my race pass. When they dump the results using the race management system, the, the website's updated automatically for them. So not to worry about populating that later. And then the, the, like it goes all the way to, you can print the checks. Um, so that way the checks are done at the end of the night. I mean, if you have five classes of cars on an oval, in an oval world, you know, when that first class is done before that second class hits the A feature, you can have the checks printed um, for that first class. And then, and then on top of that points tabulations, so you can build your own point schemes and then you generate points for championship points. Another layer on top of that, we built the sanction management system where several sanctions are embracing this. Or when the racetracks use so like sanction think of it like uh with soda or or usra they're you know some regional sanctioning bodies that have multiple classes with national points and state points and regional points and rookie points now now they can basically send when all the tracks add their points it sends up to the sanctioning body and then the, the sanctioned points administrator just has to verify it and the national points for 100 racetracks could be updated on by noon on monday so we just try to streamline all of that to make it just that much easier for everybody where we've seen racetracks that went to, went from four or five or even six scores in the tower down to just one or two well i, I gotta be honest with you um i've checked it out for lifetiming i had no idea that it was capable of doing all of these things to help the track promoters with their functions from selling tickets to printing checks you've you've created something that is um, you know, so multifaceted, it's helping people, you know, at the front gate and out the back gate as well. Exactly. And it's, it's, it's my, it's our goal as a company. I mean, we got to remember, I, I stress, it's been stressing this a lot lately in some of the different interviews and, and talks we've been having, but the biggest thing we have to remember as an industry is, um, it's the racetracks, right? I mean, the racetracks, we need to do everything that we can to make them, you know, profitable, successful, because at the end of the day, if, without the racetracks, none of us would, our entire industry wouldn't exist. So one of our two big goals with my race pass is promoter related. It's create an efficient suite of tools that promoters can use and rely on to make their program more efficient, profitable. Um, and then number two is to give those same promoters ways to get their information out there, get more eyeballs on their product, engage those race fans. And that's why we've developed our fantasy racing platform um, 
that we've been testing with the last couple of years, but those are our two main goals with my race pass. And it's all, I mean, we have, we have goals for drivers. We want to take care of them too. We have goals for fans. We want to take care of them too, but us as an industry, it's the racetracks that makes this sport happen. And, and we, we can't forget that. And uh, how many promoters racetracks do you currently have in your network? We just, we just, as far as tracks that use my race pass on a weekly basis, um, we just passed the number of 700. So with that, that, Number is quite large, obviously. That's that's the circle tracks in the United States. An interesting statistic there, Joe, is uh, nearly 85% of the oval tracks in the U.S. have been touched by my race pass this season alone. Meaning, either the track uses my race pass, or a like a travel and series would come through and use my race pass. For example, the Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series, the World of Outlaw Late Models, World of Outlaw Sprint Cars, USMTS. Um, some of the, the dirt car series, um, all them top series utilize my race pass and, and, um, and that number's grown obviously. And then wouldn't that wouldn't happen if we, obviously we got to have a good product for that um, to, in order to make that happen. But more importantly, over anything, uh, we have to have a, a really, really solid, strong team. And we couldn't do anything that we do without the team that we have. What's interesting about us at my race pass is we're made up of um, series, um, series administrators. We're made up of you know, like Jim, he's been involved in the digital marketing world for 25 plus years, not the age of Jim, I'm sorry. Um, and for, you know, all that kind of fun stuff. we got some of the best announcers in the sport that works at my race pass. The, the, I'm a previous track owner myself of a couple of different places, been a racer my most of my life. And, you know, my race pass, we are racers. Racing is in our DNA, just as it is with everybody else. So that's, that's one in one, one big one big piece, I think, with, with my race pass is the quality team that we have. Excellent. And so let's take a second to, because not everybody watches every second of every webinar, but uh, contact information and action step, uh, Josh, in that uh, for people that are out there that are not, you know, they're part of that slim uh, group of people that aren't already involved, um, you know, where do they go? Who do they talk to to find out more information and get involved or learn to use more features? Well, the best place to go is just our website, myracepass.com. Um, there's a, a plethora of information on what we can do for drivers, what we can do for businesses, what we can do for the, the race fan, and what we can do, obviously, for the promoters. Um, the email address that best suits us for everything is just simply support at myracepass.com. That reaches about a, 10 of us on our team. And um, But there's there's a lot of good quality information on our website, myracepass.com, and and um, we've we spent a lot of time keeping that up to date as fast. You know, we're in technology, so things change as you know fast. So we we try to stay on top of that. But myracepass.com is the best place to go. And what about future objectives and, and goals that you're? You know, it's amazing that you've gotten to this uh, point and you're so successful. But what about uh, keeping it going? What are you looking to do in the near future? Well, um, we're never going to forget where we're at in the circle track world. There's a lot of different things that we can do to make things better. Um, and uh, we want to always want to improve the practices there. But one of the big things is, and it's no secret that we are, we are going to migrate and move into the drag racing world is where it would like where I met you, Joe, in, down at Texas Motorplex. Um, there's a lot of things in there. I mean, it's a different type of racing, obviously, from our perspective, but there are some very similar aspects of what we can do to help. Um, there are some we've been we've been developing and learning and studying, um, doing R and D work for almost four years for the drag racing world, and and we're not quite there yet, but we are on the on the other side too. Like what we had what we had going on at Texas Motorplex, Joe, you've seen that, and um, I'd like to get your response on it while we're on this call. But I mean that's that's our next direction, and I know and I'd like Jim to add add a piece to this too because I know Jim's excited about us getting into drag racing as well. Jim. I'm very excited about us getting into drag racing. Um, it, it expands a lot of the opportunities for other things that we have to do, uh, you know, in terms of talking about future growth that we have in addition to moving into the drag racing world, part of it is is the digital ad network that my race pass has and drag racing is going to be a very important part of that as we move into the future as much as like Josh said we don't ever want to forget the core and we're never going to stray from it um, drag racing provides a lot of room for growth because it also moves us into the hot rod world and a lot more into um, general automotive racing and performance enthusiasts which is a much you know much more open pool of opportunity 
Excellent. Uh, yes. Well, you know, all of a sudden I'm part of the webinar, right? I was there <laughs> with Josh and we spent uh, a long time, eight days or so at the Texas Motorplex in Annis at the Stampede to Speed event. It was amazing. And, and these guys are around there. And of course, you know, like what's, what's up with that? Um, and we had a couple of great conversations, but it was integrating the, you know, timing and scoring and putting it out on my race pass mobile app, which is something that hasn't really happened native stuff on their own website, et cetera. But uh, I found it to be very interesting. And I'd spent a lot of time going back and forth from what I uh, typically rely on to what was coming down uh, thanks to my race pass. And I found it to be you know, very similar in terms of speed. Obviously the information was being pulled from the same place. So it was all accurate. It was just a little bit of a learning curve as to where, you know, like an HRA's timing and scoring was more web-based and kind of an endless scroll right? Like if I want to go find previous runs, I go back up. Uh, if I want to look for other stuff, I go back down. But you guys had an interesting uh, deal going on. And I thought it was very promising, especially with what you're talking about. Um, you know, the professional level of racing, we're talking about 50 people, right? In the nitro ranks and in pro stock, 60, 80 people. But all of the Lucas Oil Series racers and even bracket racers around the country that chase points, and, uh, you know, some ET series, boy, wouldn't it be great to be able to have your stats displayed to show that you won five races this year, you run it up two times, three semifinals, something like that. You're first in the points. Um, th right now, I don't know that that is possible. Racers may tell you that they may add it up. They may show you it's on a tracks website. It's on Facebook, people taking copies of PDFs and posting them, but there's just a lack of, uh, you know, it's not quite as sexy as what you guys go, go, got going on. So my initial impression was that it's uh, it's a good thing. And there's a lot of potential with drag racing because there are so many drag racers out there at so many levels. I appreciate that feedback, Joe. That was, that was a lot of fun for me there. I mean, you know, I, I'm a circle track guy, uh, dirt specifically, and, um, you know, drag racing. Uh, we've done a lot of research. We actually have uh, Michelle... Uh, Lackey up from Alaska Raceway Parks, a good friend of ours. Uh, we actually went up there somewhat selfishly because I wanted to go to Alaska, but um, we were able to learn learn a lot that night. And actually, I got I got to throw this plug out there because uh, I asked her because I wanted the driver perspective from it if, if she had a run with your brung class. So I, she said yeah. So I entered my little uh, Nissan Rogue in the trophy class and ended up coming out on top. So that was, that was a lot of fun <laughs> winning a trophy at Alaska Raceway Park. But my, my point is, is the, the, the drag racing world is definitely different. And um, we met a lot of cool people down there at Texas, along with yourself, Joe, and um, got a lot of feedback from a lot of the drivers and a lot in multiple drag strips that were there as well. And we're just really, really excited about what we could potentially do there. We know we got some work to do yet, but um, and we'll get there. We will. And um, it won't be long from now. Right. And, and it is. It's uh, one of those situations where there are so many things going on in drag racing. Not that there's only a couple things going on in circle track or dirt track racing. There's a lot goes on out there. But to unify all of it, it must be uh, challenging. There is a question out there from Logan. Uh, it's, it says goals for broadcasters, question mark. Uh, I, I, please elaborate on that and how that works together for Logan. So I feel like I'm taking all the questions, guys. I apologize, Jim and Chris, but... Yeah. So one of the other things that we do, um, uh, I think somewhere around over 100 broadcasters in the circle track world rely on our broadcast tools. What that is, so Joe, in a, in a circle track world, you've seen like a NASCAR race where you got the ticker across the top of your running order. Um, you might have a splash screen at the start of the race that shows the lineups. Um, so we, we provide those kind of tools that's very easy for a broadcaster to grab a hold of using a web link. Um, so they just need a link. So they might have a station. So like Dirt Vision, for example, with the World Racing Group, the World of Outlaws, um, that link, they, they, they get that link from the score, scoring tower on the premises from the facility at the racetrack, but they send that link to, to Charlotte at their headquarters to be able to handle all their stuff. Um, but the, the ticker across the top, the lineups, the results, we even have fantasy standings. We'll have a news ticker that can pull from the network and all that's powered by our MRP broadcast tools. Will that come in drag racing? Absolutely. We actually have a test version out there now, and I think uh, uh, there's been a couple of different broadcasters that have been testing that for us. So that's that's exciting to to come with that. So 
definitely, definitely good future in, in the hand on, on for broadcasters, both in drag and in, and in the circle track world. And no, with I mean, that too, um, oh, sorry, Joe. With, no, go, for, ahead, for, go ahead. For announcers at racetracks, when it comes to broadcasters, we do have a, uh, a, a feature um, for the announcer tool kind of. It's kind of a page on there. You can see um, information on drivers. Um, so you're calling a race, you can pull it up and kind of read some information about them. If you have time to kill at a racetrack too, um, you can keep uh, fans uh, engaged by just kind of reading out some stats or information about them as well too. So uh, we had that in there for, for announcers um, and using the My Race Pass app uh, when you're announcing a race around the racetrack. It, it, if you use that for lineups results, you can go in the bleachers and sit by the fans and call a race because you know the lineups are on your phone there. I've done that myself before. It's been a great interactive tool there. So uh, using the app and that broadcast, um, the uh, announcer screen is going to be a big help there as well. Excellent, guys. Give that information, the vital information. Once again, I see Francisca and Judy are back. Uh, very, very informative, and I wish you the best as you guys expand your business. There's a lot of great stuff out there, and uh, you know, would love racers would love to see their stats available and easy to track. Uh, that's very helpful to the sport. So go ahead. Well, th thank you very much, Josh, Chris, Jim. Great pleasure to have you all. Registering on EPAR Trade is easy. To start, click on the Join for Free button on the homepage. First, search your company to see if it's already in our database. If you see your company on the list, click on it to select it. Then, choose Claim Company if you are one of the decision makers, an owner, marketing person, or main company contact. Or choose Join Company if you are an employee, and press Continue. If you couldn't find your company in our database, select Register a New Company. On the following page, fill out your name, email, phone number, job title, and choose a secure password. If you chose Register a New Company, you'll need to choose your business type. Select Supplier if you're looking to display products or services and connect with buyers. Choose Racing Business if you're looking to source new parts and connect with suppliers. Choose Race Team if you own or are a member of a professional race team. Then, enter your company name. Please provide a website, Facebook page, or LinkedIn if you have one, and choose to either claim or join the company. You can view and agree to our terms of use here. If you'd like to receive our weekly newsletter, choose Accept. Finally, click Register Now and your registration will be submitted for approval. An email will be sent to your inbox. Please confirm your email address and you will be approved shortly. Welcome to ePartrade.